always I said this before at uh, conferences uh, that Southwest Radio has put on. I always like speaking to God's people because they're the only people in the world who actually do believe in giants, dragons, and unicorns. <laughs> and now I'm going to add to that ghosts, aliens, and Bigfoots. Amen. <laughs> Is it Bigfoot or Big Feets? I, I, I never figured that out. Uh, but anyway, good to be with you today. I'm going to ask you to pray. Uh, for we're going to after lunch, we're going to get the road and, and try to get home. My wife's sister, uh, we had COVID go through our church again a few weeks ago, and uh, she has it pretty bad. She has COVID pneumonia and uh, has been in the hospital for a few days. She's, uh, you know, passed out a few times, fell and broken some ribs, and, and that was before she went into the hospital. So we're going to be on the road this afternoon. We just ask you to pray for her and pray for us as we travel and uh, I miss my church I, I didn't get to preach last Sunday because I was sick and we just called called the service off and uh, so I'm anxious to get back home see my people that's the heart of a pastor and that's that's what I am uh, what do you see up on the screen here you see a Bible passage why don't you turn there uh, see I can put all the verses up on the screen and uh, then you can read and benefit from it. But I think that it's better to teach a person to fish than it is to give them a fish. Amen? So let's fish inside of 1 Kings chapter 22. And let's find out what's going on here because it has everything to do with the spirit realm and what I'm going to talk about uh, while I do that. Then we'll go to Ephesians chapter 6 after that. But let me give you the, the background here. Ahab is king uh, in, uh, up in um, uh, Samaria. And uh, Jehoshaphat is the king down in Judah. And Ahab has invited King Jehoshaphat up and said, Hey, I'm going to go to war tomorrow. And I want you to go with us. I want you to bring all your soldiers. And we'll put them with our soldiers. And surely if we get them all together, then we'll win this battle. And you know, I see that a lot in a lot of posts like on social media uh, and well-meaning Christians, I guess, they say, hey, I want you to help me pray for this, pray for that. And I believe that if we could just get more people praying, then surely God will answer that prayer. Well, I have a God who will answer one prayer from one person. Amen. It doesn't take the whole world being saved. It doesn't take the whole world praying all at the same time. The Bible says the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Amen. And so, but that's what Ahab is thinking, that if he can get Jehoshaphat in on it and his armies, that surely they'll win. Well, Jehoshaphat's got a little bit of the Lord in him. And he's not sure about Ahab and what is going to happen. And certainly Jehoshaphat doesn't want to get involved into a war that Ahab has started and not come out of it. And so he asked, do you not have anybody who's, who hears from the Lord that can sort of tell me that we're going to make it through this thing. And if you look in verse, uh, oh, let's see here, in verse uh, 5 of the chapter, and Joshua said unto the king of Israel, Inquire, I pray thee, at the word of the Lord today. Then the king of Israel gathered the prophets together, about 400 men. So let's say that that represents maybe a Bible college or a seminary or it represents a denomination of preachers gathering together. Anyway, we've got about 400 men and lo and behold, they're all going to say the exact same thing. They said unto him, shall I go against Ramoth Gilead to battle or shall I forbear? And they said, go up for the Lord shall deliver it into the hand of the king. Now it sounded good. And Ahab said, see, all of these preachers, they're all saying the same thing. But let me tell you something. Christianity is not a popularity contest. Not very many will make it. Straight is the way and narrow is the gate and few there be that find it. Amen. Where's my woohoo, my Kentucky amens from yesterday? That's what I'm looking for. So Jehoshaphat says, you know, that's, is there not anybody else? Ahab says, well, I got this Micaiah guy, but I don't like him. Why not? He don't tell me what I want to hear. Sounds like your typical 21st century church member. Amen. There goes your amens. So they bring Micaiah out. Micaiah, you know, Ahab can't stand him 
finally Micaiah is going to tell everybody what he sees. And that's what we find. Uh, what was that verse? Verse. Um, let me get back to it here. To verse. Uh, yeah, first Kings, yeah, chapter, chapter 22, verse 19. Uh, and he said, hear thou, therefore, this is what Micaiah saw. God allowed him to see what was going on in heaven. And the question is, um, the same thing with the book of Job. Do, do devils, do evil spirits have access to heaven currently? And I would say, yes, we know that they did in the days of Job because all the sons of God came and gathered in Job chapter 1, Job chapter 2, and Satan came also with them. And now we see here uh, a sort of a vision into heaven. And he says, Hear thou therefore the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne and all the host of heaven standing by him on his right hand and on his left. If we were to take that symbolism and go like to Matthew 25 where Jesus was talking about how the shepherd divides and separates, uh, you know, everybody as a shepherd would divide the sheep from the goats. He puts the sheep on his right hand. That's the hand of power. That's where the book is in Revelation chapter 5. It's in God's right hand. But then Jesus says, then the goats there go on the left. The, the, the sheep on the right hand, they enter into heaven. The goats on the left, the Bible says, they enter into everlasting punishment. And so if we use that same analogy here, we could say that, let's say that the good angels, the good spirits, are on God's right hand. The bad ones are on God's left hand. It's just a little thing of mine. But verse 20, and the Lord said, Who shall persuade Ahab that he may go up and fall at Ramoth Gilead? Let me ask you a question. Is there a verse in the Bible that you can think of where it talks about people falling? How about 2 Thessalonians 2? There shall come a falling away first and that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition what happened in the plain of dura on the day when nebuchadnezzar wanted everybody to look at his 60 cubit tall by six cubit wide image he said at the sound of music i want everybody to do what fall read the bible it says fall and they fell in the in the valley in the plain of dura except three remember Few there be that find it. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And so uh, here we have this uh, spirit, and he says, I know how to do it. The, the one on, uh, and one said on this manner, another said on that manner. Verse 21, and there came forth a spirit. And I'm going to show you the power that one spirit has. There came forth a spirit and stood before the Lord and said, I will persuade him. And the Lord said unto him, Wherewith? And he said, I will go forth, and I will be a lying spirit in the mouth of all of his prophets. And he said, Thou shalt persuade him and prevail also. Go forth and do so. So this one spirit was in the mouth of all 400 or however many there were of the prophets and they all spoke the same thing. They all said, that, oh, Ahab, you're going to win. The, did Ahab win the battle the next day? How did that end up for Ahab? They ended up cleaning his blood out of the chariot that he bled to death in. And if you remember, at that point, the dogs came and licked up the water and the blood that had been cleaned out of that chariot because that is exactly what God said was going to do in the same place that Ahab had Naboth hung as a, as a false believer, as a, as a blasphemer to God. They hung him up in that place, and Elijah said, In the place where you hung Ahab, the dogs, Ahab or Naboth, the dogs are going to lick up your blood. And it happened exactly according to the word of God. You can always trust the book. Somebody say amen. amen. Now, let's look at what we're dealing with. Ephesians chapter 6, uh, verse 12. I, I've gotten a lot of mileage out of this passage of Scripture. For we wrestle not. Against flesh and blood. I, real, I, I don't like Joe Biden. I think he's nuts. I think he's crazy. I think he is um, money hungry and perverted. Amen? Amen? But he's not who we're fighting against. We're fighting against principalities. Think of princes in the Bible. Um, Gog, the chief 
prince of Magog, uh, Satan, the, the, the prince of the power of the air and so on, who wrestle against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world. Think of somebody that you know that's in darkness. And they're being ruled over by a spirit. They may not recognize it. They may not like it. But Paul said in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 2, that everybody that is not born again is being led by the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. And so there's only two types of people in this world. There are born-again Bible-believing Christians, and their life and their speech and their beliefs will exhibit exactly what this book says. And then there is the everybody else in the world, and their life and their actions and their conversation and the things that they believe in, the things that they say, they're going to be directed by the prince of the power of the air and all of the spirits that are on his side. Rulers of the darkness of, those, of this world and against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to do what? Just like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego did. They stood when everybody else fell away. Now, uh, I actually uh, started this particular presentation... Uh, down in Arkansas a couple of years ago uh, at a church down there that they always like to have me down every year. And uh, I said, it's not necessarily going to be like camp meeting preaching. It's going to be like an intelligence report because God knows us preachers need intelligence. Amen. And um, so anyway, I just kind of went down the list of, of things that we call them or the things that the Bible called them, spirits, devils, haunts, boogers. That's an Arkansas term. I was born in Arkansas, okay? I got out before the Clintons got a hold of it. But anyway, um, unclean spirits, the Bible refers to them as familiar spirits. We're going to look at that. That's what we're going to focus on today. Deuteronomy 18 mentions uh, familiar spirits. Spirit guides. People who say they have a spirit that guides them. If it's not the Holy Spirit, then it's got to be on the other side. It's got to be like that spirit uh, that uh, was in the mouth of the 400 prophets that uh, lied to Ahab. Uh, you have apparitions where people, and I'm going to show you a few pictures here in a moment, where people actually have seen these spirit entities, uh, lying spirits, like in 1 Kings 22. Uh, they call them gods, little g. God said, thou shalt have no other gods before me. Um, and let me just say this to all of our Catholic friends. When you pray to St. Joseph, St. Jude, St. Mary, St. John, St. John the Baptist, any, any, I don't know how many quote unquote saints they officially have in the Catholic church, you are putting someone in before God. You're actually praying to someone who you believe acts as a mediator between you and the mediator, Jesus Christ. But there is only one mediator between God and men, and it's not Mary. It is not. And I'm going to show you some things if we get time about that. But anyway, the, call, the Bible calls them devils. Uh, in, modern, in modern American speech we, or, or English uh, around the world, we've used the term demons or daemons, I don't particularly have a problem with that. That's a Greek word. It basically means a devil. And so if that's what you call them, that's what you call them. Be spirits. Like in Revelation chapter 4, uh, these, were, these were living creatures in Ezekiel 1. And when John saw them, they were, they were beasts. Like in Revelation 4, Revelation 13, there's a beast rising up out of the sea. That's a spirit. Then there's another beast rising up out of the earth. He's got two horns like a lamb. He speaks as a dragon. That's the false prophet. Revelation 18 uh, is Babylon, and Babylon is the hold of every unclean and hateful bird, the cage of every foul spirit uh, and devils. So wherever, where, and I like to think Babylon is this. Wherever Jesus Christ has been kicked out, that's Babylon. Because Babylon, she hates Christ and she hates the written word of God 
And so whenever people say, oh, I've got a, I've got a prophecy from God. I've had a dream. I've had a vision. I've got and what you're doing. You're saying that God now has added something past Revelation chapter 22 to what you think everybody should know and that it came from God. And I'm sorry, but at the end of Revelation 22, we were given specific instructions that no one is to add anything to the Word of God and no one is to take away anything from the Word of God. That's what I believe. Be spirits, death spirits. I'll show you some of those in a minute. Shadows. Uh, I don't have time to show you all the videos, but uh, there is quite a, a growing number of videos that show these basically two-dimensional shadows. And usually they are peeking around a doorway, an entrance, or a wall. And as soon as they are noticed, they just they simply jump back and disappear. There's a lot of videos that... Uh, and, and let me give you my little theory on this. Modern video cameras... Uh, and the cameras on your, like on your phone, your Samsung and your iPhone, uh, the sensors in there are designed differently than the human eye. And so while the human eye may not be able to see certain things, these sensors on these cameras do. And I think that they are picking up things that before it just, they were always there. They just were never seen and they were never really photographed. In some cases they were, and I've got an example to show you here in a minute. This is a, a case of a, there's a, this is an old house that they call a haunted house. They do tours through this thing and somebody was looking at this, uh, this stairwell and they, they took a photograph of with their, probably their digital camera and they caught a glimpse of this uh, this little spirit here, I don't know if you can see that text on there, but anyway, uh, it doesn't really have a face, uh, but you sort of see a, a, what looks familiar to you as like a woman. Uh, let's see, here is an actual photograph, uh, El Paso High School, El Paso, Texas, I think this was taken, looks like the 80s, uh, back in my day, and... Um, there is uh, all of these uh, high school students standing there, and there's a the image of a woman there, again, the face is not really discernible. Nobody knew who she was. Nobody that was standing there said, oh yeah, there she was standing right there. Nobody saw her until after the photograph was developed. Uh, this person here was, uh, they had taken a business trip or something like that, got put into a nice hotel like the Marriott here, and um, kind of makes you wonder why I'm riding around in an old RV, you know, but anyway, <laughs> I could have got a room, but anyway, or the, at least I think I could have got a room, they didn't offer me one, but anyway, uh, uh, anyway, and they're, they're taking their camera, their phone, and they're shooting video of this nice room they got, and they noticed afterward that there was an image peeking at them from the mirror okay a child listen child images are very it's like a popular thing now with uh, with what we call ghost spirits familiar spirits and so on uh, the next set of pictures uh, has really caught my attention uh, these I call the, the pale face. These are death faces, uh, eyes blackened. By the way, uh, who remembers Kiss, the rock group Kiss? Did they not put makeup on that looked identical to this? Uh, several rock stars have taken this. I, I believe that they were inspired. That look was inspired to them. It's the reason why they took out that. Nobody, nobody here thinks that they're going to see the members of KISS in heaven performing for Jesus anytime soon. Amen. Uh, but this video here, uh, there was a, a, a young boy. I guess this is his brother or something like that. And he's filming himself laying next to his brother who's asleep. And all of a sudden he sees this ghastly image there. And he puts the camera on himself, and then when he goes back over, it's gone. And not even the pillow ha is depressed or anything like that. Uh, this one here is a little bit hard to see, but this was a man from China who was, of all places, he was going through uh, an old uh, funeral home. Where are you going to find death spirits at? A funeral home. 
And I mean, he's having all kinds of poltergeist activity happen. Doors are opening, slamming, things are falling off the shelves and he is screaming. And I'm going, why are you in there? But anyway, he, he sees this image up in the, in the attic there. That's an attic fan, like a vent fan. And this image is peeking at him and then it just disappears after that. This guy uh, opened the bathroom door in his apartment and saw that staring at him from the mirror. And when he shows the camera around, this is a video, it shows the camera around, there's nothing there, but of course, it's just a small, tiny little bathroom, not enough room for somebody to hide in there. Uh, this one is uh, pretty grotesque. This is a child's hand, and if I remember right, it was a child's voice on here as well. Uh, the child's hand, but a grotesque and a macabre face that I refer to as like a death face. This one was done, taken outside this uh, somebody uh, thought there's something in the woods or somebody in the woods and uh, they finally captured this image on video um, and then like I said after that it disappeared this next one is probably in fact I, I use this on the YouTube channel the most bizarre evil spirit I've ever seen this one actually there's two separate videos of this one and it's walking it's upside down it's face and body is pointing upward, but it's walking in an abnormal manner uh, going backwards. And again, the face, the dark eyes, the dark lips, the dark hair, the pale, pallid death face, I call it, uh, is obvious. And, and there's just a lot more of these, more than I have uh, time to tell. Now, what I always want to go to Scripture. Prove all things, hold fast that which is good. To see if these things are even true or not. In the day of digital manipulation, digital image manipulation, now AI can make photographs, it can make videos, it can make movies of basically anything that we train it to do. And it looks very, very realistic. How do we separate what's true from what's not true? Well, if it's true it's, and it's significant, it's going to be in the Bible. In Job 16, 16, my face is foul with weeping and on my eyelids is the shadow of death. I think Job or whoever said this in Job is, is speaking directly to this same imagery here. Uh, let me just run through the, in Isaiah 29, 22, therefore thus saith the Lord who redeemed Abraham concerning the house of Jacob, Jacob shall not now be ashamed, neither shall his face now wax pale. When someone hears sudden bad news or confronted suddenly with something, we can see their face lose all color. It's because the blood, the person is in a fight or flight mode and the blood that would be in their face is being used now to power up the muscles to either fight something or to run from something or whatever. Uh, and, and the blood leaves, there's a lot of blood in the face, but it leaves the face and it leaves this very pale look. The reason why in most movies, when you see someone die in a movie, it doesn't look real. The reason why is that person's really not dead. They don't kill the actors at the end of the movie, okay? And their face is still full of blood. But someone who's, I used to help a guy pick up dead bodies, and I can tell you that the face loses all the blood, and it's a very pale, very grayish looking tone to the skin. In Revelation chapter 6, I looked and behold a pale horse, grayish uh, look to it. And his name that sat on him was death and hell followed with him. So I think the Bible is telling us, yes, these things can be true. Now, who remembers the Amityville horror? Who remembers that? Okay. Uh, I did a little research in this. So it was 34 different movies were spawned from this one event. And let me tell you briefly about how it happened. It all started in 1974, November 13th. Ronald DeFeo, who is there in the picture there, it wasn't his family that went out screaming, ah, get out of here. But it all started with Ronald DeFeo. He was uh, a young man, he was into drugs. Uh, he was hanging around with, uh, uh, you know, a, a, a sort of a sordid crowd uh, at bars and such. And the story is that he was home one night uh, in his family's home there uh, at the Amityville house. There's the house if you 
uh, can remember that image. But anyway, he's watching a movie, and at the end of the, end of the movie, something happens, and he doesn't remember. Uh, to this day, he doesn't remember what happened. But he got up after the movie and grabbed a gun and went through the house, killed both of his parents first, and then started with his siblings, 18 years old, 13 years old, 12 years old, and 9 years old. Killed his siblings. Right after that, the house went on sale because the family's dead. He's in, and Ronald DeFeo's in prison. And so the Lutz family is the family in question. They bought the house because uh, it went down to, I think, like less than $80,000. And in the housing market in the, in the New York area in the 70s, that was quite a bargain. And so they jumped on it. If 28 days later is all it took for them being in that house. Uh, they left it in the middle of the night. They left everything that they owned in that house. And they said, we're not going back for it. We don't want it. They left everything, including the house, and they never returned. Uh, there was a couple, and it's uh, the same couple that was made famous by the Conjuring movies, the Annabelle movies. Ed and Lorraine Warren, they saw themselves, they were Roman Catholic, they saw themselves as like ghostbusters of the day. They always did what they call paranormal psychic research and things like that. And this was right up their alley. And so they hired a guy by the name of Ed Campbell uh, to set up in the house, this is after the Lutz family has moved out, to set up in the house an infrared camera with black and white film. And uh, this is the image that, that they captured. There is a, you can see the little boy here. Uh, that's just in the middle. Now this is, this is what looks like the image of uh, the youngest boy. The Defe uh, John DeFeo was his name. Nine years old. Now here's the question. Is that possible? Is it possible that the spirit, the soul of little nine-year-old John DeFeo could be walking to and fro in this house, uh, stuck there by some law of the spirit realm, and he wants to be set free. And is it possible that a dead person's soul could inhabit a house like this? I'm, I'm going to answer that question. I, I agree with you, but I'm going to answer but let's use scripture, shall we? Uh, let me just run through these very quickly. These are just very scriptures. Uh, we know that Jesus dealt a lot in his ministry here on this earth with spirits. Um, they brought him unto him all sick people that were taken with divers diseases and torments and those which were possessed with devils and those which were lunatic and those that had the palsy and he healed them. By the way, the Bible, the Bible never tells you that all sickness is based upon you have a devil in your body. The Bible never, ever, ever tells you that. We're, we get sick because we're under the curse of sin in our bodies. We're going to die. Amen. This body is going to give up. Amen. Uh, yeah, let the earth have it back. I don't want it anymore. Amen. Uh, but Jesus, he dealt with those that were possessed with devils. Never had a problem with them. He said, just get out. Uh, Matthew eight sixteen. they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils. And he cast the spirit out with his what? Amen. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Revelation 19, he had a name written, which is the word of God. Somebody said, you cannot separate the person of Jesus from the book of Jesus, the word of God. You cannot separate them. Matthew 9, 32, as they went out, behold, they brought to him a dumb man, obviously a Biden, possessed with the devil. <laughs> And when the devil was cast out, the dumb spake, and the multitudes marveled, saying, It was never so seen in Israel. They marveled at Jesus' power over these devils. And I, what I'm trying to give you is the good part of it. You do not have to be afraid of these. You know, I've watched probably close to a hundred different 
uh, ghost videos, poltergeist activity, things like that. You know, I've never seen a ghost or a spirit or what they call a poltergeist or anything like that. In all these videos, they scare the person holding the camera. I've never seen one of them killed. I've never seen one of them murdered. I've never seen one of them, uh, a spirit take an ax and hack a guy to death. I've never seen anything like that. These, the power of some of these spirits is limited. And there's nothing, especially if you are born again, they are not to be God has not given us a spirit of, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Amen to that. Uh, Luke chapter 4, verse 33. And in the synagogue, there was a man which had a spirit of an unclean devil. Are there unclean deeds that people do? Dirty deeds. People that do dirty things, we call them. They have people that have dirty minds. People that watch dirty things on the internet. You know, there's a spirit attached to that. You better believe there is, okay? The power over people who are hooked on pornography is not just a physical power. It is a spiritual one as well, both of them. The devil cried out with a loud voice saying, let us... Alone, There was obviously more than one there. What have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? I know who thou art, the Holy One of God. And Jesus rebuked him, saying, Hold thy peace and come out of him. And when the devil had thrown him in the midst, he came out of him and heard him not. And they were all amazed and spake among themselves, saying, What a word! Here it is, back to the word again. What a word is this, for what with authority and power he commanded the unclean spirits, and they come out. There's power in the word of God. Luke chapter 4, verse 40. Uh, verse 41, the devils also, and, and devils came also out of many crying out and saying, thou art Christ, the son of God. But Jesus rebuked them. Why would he do that? Because Jesus at that time in history had an appointment with the cross. And nothing was going to stop him from going to the cross. He especially didn't, I mean, the devils didn't know better. They didn't know that Jesus was supposed to die on the cross. They just know who he is and they're proclaiming them. But Jesus said, uh-uh, keep your mouth shut. I don't mind a few people knowing who I am. But if the whole world and especially the demonic realm knows who I am, the Bible says that they would have never crucified the Lord of glory. They would have never done that. And so that's why I believe he rebuked them. Luke chapter 8. Here we have, um, uh, we have uh, he went to the Gadarenes and went forth to the land. Many people came out of the city. There came out a certain man which had devils long time. Wear no clothes. Excuse me. Nudity and immodesty is a spiritual issue. Amen, amen, amen. Neither abode in any house but in the tombs. Notice the fascination with death. Uh, who remembers that? I don't know if it's still a fad now or not, but the, the people who dressed up like Gothic, what they called Gothic style, they wore the dark clothes, they wore black uh, fingernail polish, they wore black makeup, black hair, everything about them was black. They always had a pale, I, we had a young, we had a Christian school years ago, and we had a young lady, beautiful young lady, when she was about 12, 13, uh, she was in our school and then she decided she didn't want to be there anymore. She was in public school for about a year and a half, something like that. Her mom brought her back to me and said, uh, I need to put her back in here. She's, I can't do anything with her. And her whole image had changed from this beautiful young girl to now she was totally death gothic. Everything was about death. And uh, ultimately the girl decided she wasn't going to come back and so she didn't. Uh, but these spirits, they cry out with a loud voice, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou son of the most high? I beseech thee, torment me not. We know this story very well. We know that he was called Legion because many devils were entered into him. And we know the story that they were cast out. I'm trying to move through this because I want to get to the, to the a very serious topic uh, that I'm going to be dealing with. There is hope, by the way, for those who are possessed. We know that this man from the Gadarenes, once he was... Um, 
uh, relieved of these devils uh, being in his life and controlling him, the Bible says in the next scene, there he was sitting at the feet of Jesus. That's where I want to be, amen, at the feet of Jesus, amen. Uh, so anyway, and there we have Mary Magdalene, the very first witness to the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And yet she was, had seven devils cast out of her. Wasn't there something that Jesus taught us about seven devils entering into a house that had been swept and garnished? Think about it. Okay, think about it. Uh, in Hindu, in the Hindu teachings, I mentioned this yesterday about Kundalini. The serpent that dwells at the base of your spine goes up through the 33 bones of your spine, but it goes through, this is Hindu theology, they pass through what are called the seven chakras. Those chakras are des described as energy vortexes or wheels. It was wheels that we find in Ezekiel chapter one and the spirit of the living creature was in the wheel. The wheels were alive. So I think those seven chakras are seven devils that inhabit those or at least inspire those who practice Various forms. Of, by the way, people don't do yoga. You know what the word yoga means in Sanskrit? It's a Sanskrit word. It means yoke. Be not unequally together with unbelievers. You know what you're yoked to? The 330 million gods of Hinduism. You are joining yourself with their spirit. Don't do it. Don't do it, okay? Just lay off the bacon for a while, amen? <laughs> okay. Here's what I wanted you to notice. Remember, this is, this is what Jesus wanted. This is working now according to the plan of God. Now, before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour was come, that he should depart out of this world unto the Father, having loved his own which were in the world. Say amen, that's you. He loved them unto the end. And supper being ended, watch this, the devil having now put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him. Where did Judas get the idea to betray Jesus? He didn't think it up on his own. Satan himself put that into his heart. So I'm going to ask you a question. Do you, I asked this yesterday, but do you still believe that devils have an influence in the way people think, the way they act, the way they talk, the way they walk, the way they vote, the way they see the world, the way they see God, the way they don't see God? You think devils and spirits have anything? I say they have a lot to do with that. Going all the way back to Genesis chapter 3, the devil put it into the mind of Eve. Notice that in that chapter, the devil never one time said, why don't you eat this fruit? It's good. He never told her one time to eat it. She came up with that on her own. But he triggered her lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Amen. And here we have Acts chapter 10. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth, the Holy Ghost, and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. You, as a born-again Christian, you cannot be possessed. You cannot be possessed. There is no room in God's throne in your heart for Jesus and Satan simultaneously. It's either one or the other. But you can be oppressed. Notice the word press is in that. Devils will, I, I'm going to be dead honest with you. I told my wife before I came up to speak, I'd just been in a sort of a down mood this morning. I had a very, very bad dream last night. Very bad. I'm not going to get into it, uh, but I've had these before. And there's, I'm going to show you scripture. There's no doubt that those were spiritually influenced. You say, well, Pastor, aren't you born again? Yes. The devil may not have access to my spirit, but he's got access to my flesh and to my mind. 
Amen? Amen. We can be oppressed of the devil, but Jesus can deliver us. Acts chapter 13, this is Paul dealing with uh, uh, a wizard uh, who is trying to subvert the gospel. And he says, O full of all subtlety and all mischief, thou child of the devil, thou enemy of all, and right, of all righteousness, wilt thou not cease to pervert the right ways of the Lord. So the spirit realm is manifested. Even if we don't see the ghosts or the spirits or the devils, they are manifested through the activities of mankind because the devil will always pervert the right ways of the Lord. You know what I see in that? You, if you know me, you know I'm always going, hey, look here, look here, look here in the Bible, read this verse right here because Everything that we are to know, everything that we are to believe is right here in the pages of this book. And if you think, well, you know, I look at these other books, I find some things in there. Listen, I'm just, I'm not done getting it all out of here yet. Amen. Amen. So I'm, going, I'm just going to stick with that, but that's just me. But I know for a fact that the devil always likes to pervert the right ways of the Lord, even in my mind. I'll think of a verse and, and find out that it actually doesn't say what I thought it said. I've done that a million times. So be on guard. Wrestle with principalities and powers. Amen. Now, notice that uh, Paul said he warned us that we should not fall into the reproach and the snare of the devil. I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand, but I'll just ask men and women all over this building. Was there a time when you fell into the devil's trap? And you know things about yourself that I don't know that nobody else knows. But you know what that trap is. And he'll lay it out more than once. And we get caught all the time. First Timothy 4.1, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. See, they are writing theology. They are leading denominations. They're leading churches. They're leading religions all over the world. In Revelation 9, uh, the rest of the men which are not killed by these plagues, yet repented not of the works of their hands, that they should not worship devils and idols of gold. When God told us not to have or make any graven image, I'll never forget, uh, we were at, uh, Derek, we were in Dallas at, I think it was another future Congress event, uh, Southwest Radio was there then, and a lady came up to me, and she said, Pastor Mike, I've been watching your videos, and I just think that there's some neat things there. But she said, I, I think you're wrong about Catholicism. She says, I'm a Roman Catholic. Now, I'm standing there, and I'm shooting flares up to God, going, hey, God, I need help here. I need something to say. And um, she started talking, and, and God said, ask her this. So I said, ma'am, can I ask you to do something? I said, the next time you go to your Catholic church, I want you to look at all those statues in there and ask yourself, what did God say in the Ten Commandments? And I started to quote it, and she said, I know, I know. Our, pa our priest told us that we're not to make images of false gods. And I said, ma'am, that is not what it says. And she looked at me funny because she had never heard this before. See, in the Catholic Bible, they will have the, I think it was the second commandment, but the catechism doesn't. They blatantly remove, thou shalt not make unto thee, and I'm quoting this to her, thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, the likeness of anything that is in heaven above or in earth or beneath the earth. Thou shalt not pray to them. And I'm quoting this commandment to her. She acted like she had never heard that before in her life. I planted the seed of the word of God. I pray that one day it'll bring forth fruit. Amen. That's all we can do. But see, there are seducing spirits. There are doctrines of devils. I can tell you that a lot in the UFO community, they are following and being led and lured in by seducing spirits. Doctrines of devils. Rev, uh, we already covered Revelation chapter 9. In, now in Matthew chapter 4, 24, this is my definition of a poltergeist. His fame went out through all Syria, and they brought unto him all sick people that were taken with diverse diseases and torments. 
Definition of a Poltergeist. Uh, this is a book I have, the Encyclopedia of Ghosts and Spirits. Uh, a Poltergeist is a mischievous... Uh, who, who, who knows Loki? The god Loki? Uh, if you watch Marvel, you, okay, you know who Loki is. Um, but Loki was always... He was the trickster god. He always did trickery like you'd wake up one morning and the milk that you had just milked the day before would be soured or anything like that. Things like that happening around the farm or around the house that had no other explanation for. Uh, and, and, this, and this trickster god or this trickster devil is in a lot of religions and mythologies. The Native Americans, uh, the coyote was always a trickster spirit to them because of the wiliness of the coyote. Okay, you know what I'm talking about, don't you? Anyway, um, but anyway, mischievous, sometimes malevolent spirit or unknown energy that is characterized by noises, moving objects, physical disturbances. Poltergeist comes from the German word poltern, which means to knock. And I've, I've seen a dozen of videos where there's just knocking going on. And when the person grabs the door, there's nothing there. Uh, it's a knocking spirit. In other words, it's a spirit that wants you to be aware of its presence and be in fear of it. And so people will move into an apartment or into a house and all of a sudden the, they wake up in the middle of the night, doors slamming, opening cabinets, opening shut, and dishes flying out all the... Are you kidding me? <laughs> I gotta move. I gotta move. I gotta move. <laughs> Regard not them that have familiar spirits, neither seek after wizards to be defiled by them. Now, let me, I'm going to not deal with the issue of the dead, but I am going to deal with the issue of what a familiar spirit does. When Saul went to the woman at Endor, she conjured up by the familiar spirit who they thought was Samuel. The woman said unto Saul, I saw gods ascending out of the earth. And he said unto her, what form is he of? And she said, an old man cometh up and he is covered with a mantle. And Saul perceived that it was Samuel, but it was not Samuel. Because the Bible says that, that Saul died for this transgression which he committed against the Lord, even against the word of the Lord, which he kept not, and also for asking counsel of one that had a familiar spirit to inquire of it. Case closed. It was, it was a lying spirit. In Jeremiah chapter 2, we have the prophets who prophesied not, not by the word of the Lord. The Bible says they prophesied by Baal. In other words, their spirits received their visions and their teachings by way of a God, a familiar spirit called Baal. Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Let me ask you a question, just as we kind of wind this down. Let's just say that the story that Joseph Smith actually happened the way he said it happened. Let's just say that Joseph Smith was out on this hill in Kumora, New York, or whatever, and he's praying, and all of a sudden he sees God and Jesus, and he sees this angel called Moroni. And this angel tells him of these, this other testament, this other gospel, and where he can find it, and then the angel is going to show him how he can read it. Let's, let's just say that that's true. Is that, that's what a familiar spirit does. It deceives people. This, this may have very well been an angel, but let me quote Galatians chapter 1. Paul said, though we or an angel from heaven bring you any other gospel, let him be accursed. And clearly, this angel, moron I, brought another gospel to this world in the form of Mormonism. Who knows anything about Ellen White, the founder of the Seventh-day Adventist church? Do you know where she got her ideas? She didn't get them from reading the Bible. She, in a vision, was led into heaven by an angel who showed her a display of the Ten Commandments written in stone in heaven. And she said there was glory coming out of all the commandments. But 
There is more glory coming out of the fourth commandment, which is the Sabbath day commandment, than there was the other commandments. And the angel told her that while, yes, Christ died for all of the other commandments, you are still required to keep the Sabbath commandment. That's law keeping. That's what Paul wrote to the Galatian churches about and said, knock it off or get these people out of your church. Receive ye the spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith. How did you come to know Jesus? Was it because of your good works first that you did and then God saved you? Or did you hear the word of God preached and you decided, yes, I'm going to accept Jesus. How is it that you got saved? Because, and so what we have, another example of an angel bringing another gospel to this world. That's the, that's the beginning of the Seventh-day Adventist church. How many, how many Catholic nuns, how many monks, how many priests, how many Roman Catholics have seen visions of the Virgin Mary? Have seen, the, I, um, I have a picture here of a nun. She's, she sees Jesus directly in her convent showing up in her room and he's going to give her instructions that she should tell all the Catholics they need to pray the rosary more. They need to take the Eucharist every day and they need to repent daily of their sins and then maybe God will accept them. Is that the gospel? No, that's a familiar spirit. The vision of Mary that showed up in... Um, uh, where was it in France? What was it? Yeah, Fatima. Fatima showing up to these three children. In every, the one down in, in uh, Mexico where the Virgin Mary uh, made this quilt, this blanket for this guy with this image of the Virgin Mary on it. And in every case where the Virgin Mary appears to people, she's always telling them, I want you to build a great cathedral in my honor. Who's, what spirit is that really? Is that Mary or is that mystery? Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. People, we're living in a world right now because of social media. People are being led astray by the millions. People who would have had access to the word of God, to the true gospel of Jesus Christ, are now being led away into false doctrines false churches, false ideas. They're rejecting the word of God in favor of dreams, visions, latter-day prophecies, you name it. And let me tell you this, some of the leading, and I'm not in, I am not against Donald Trump being a president again for another four years, but be careful. A lot of the leading people who are pushing him the hardest as far as in the realm of Christianity is concerned are some of these people who are saying, who are prophesying all the time that God has a special favor over Donald Trump and God, he is the man that's going to save America. All, all of these men and women prophesied in 2020 that don't worry, Trump will be president. This will all be done away with and he will be president for four more years. They lied through their teeth. And you know what? All that has to happen for a person to not be a prophet is to be wrong one time. So what does that tell you about this sure word of prophecy? It cannot be wrong. I don't care what you read into it. I don't care who says what. This cannot be wrong or we're not to abide by it. So I believe that it's right. God convinced me one day that it was right. And it saved my life. I'm telling you, it did. Okay? Father, I ask your blessings on this word and, and uh, on my effort, Father. Um, Lord, that you would go beyond the weakness of my flesh. And Father, Lord, you would speak to your people as only you can. We thank you for the word, Jesus Christ. We thank you for the written word of God that abides with us everywhere we go. Thy word have I hidden in my heart. And I might not sin against thee. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. And I pray, dear God, that you would lead these people. Thank you, dear God, for these good people of Southwest Radio. I love them. And I pray, dear God, Lord, that you would lead them as they uh, continue to present the gospel of Jesus Christ. 
to a world that needs it. I pray, dear God, that those who listen would hear the true gospel of Christ and be saved before it's too late. We ask this for all of our family members, our friends, our loved ones. And uh, we ask this in the name of Jesus, our Lord, and all God's people said, amen. God bless you. I love you. Thank you.